so here's the thing that when I was doing the pre-interview, you got this cool accent, like you're way stronger than me. Like it seems like you got everything going for you. Like how did I'm you get your whole life? Well. How is your like? Why does your life work so well? Uh, like you're, pro are you're probably are you rich too? Hell no. Is this hell? Okay. I, I'm here Beautiful sitting with wife. you right now. Yeah. It's like it's perfect. Oh, that's true. All right. That, so, that, that does kind of explain yeah. where you were at in life. So. All right. So wait up, everybody. I, I love the fact that we're on podcasts and everybody's drinking. So where I come from, we don't wait till the end of something. But uh, can we just raise a glass and a drink oh, and say cheers, absolutely. everybody? Cheers. cheers. And with here's you, mate. Cheers. Uh, oh, thank you. Listen, uh, thank you all for coming out. Thanks for getting me to come here. Um, What's the story about? We, we actually just started to talk about it. I was playing rugby here in the States and decided I didn't want to leave. Play rugby too? Play rugby. <laughs> Anybody here know about rugby? Yeah. See? It's fucking cool, yeah? What do you mean know about rugby? <laughs> yeah, I, we know. I know about it, but I don't know about it. So, okay. uh, you know, once, once you go rugby and, you know, you, you get into that, anything's possible. And as a Kiwi, we travel the world until we find that place we call home. And... Uh, about six, seven years ago, we found Las Vegas. Uh, I mean, like everyone else here, you come to Las Vegas thinking, yeah, I'll just stop off here for a few weeks, few months. You have a really bad night that you don't wake up from, uh, and you end up living here. And uh, if, it's, if it's like most story, people yeah. uh, that I assume is here, you happen to fall in love with this town. And uh, it's a fucking great city, isn't it? But, Come on, isn't it? Yes. Put, exactly. your, put your glasses up if that's how you came to Las Vegas. Yes, on a drunken exactly. night in Mocker. And, okay. uh, and again, if you haven't watched the Blackjacks play rugby here in Las Vegas, please go and watch them. So okay. uh, that's how it began. All right, so what's the service economy? You know what? Uh, service economy, it's actually kind of interesting. So uh, we're based out of uh, hotels. So that's where it all began. Um, if you ever want to travel the world, have got no money, and uh, want to see great and amazing experiences, you go work in a hotel. And if you're actually half good at it, they'll send you around the world to open up other hotels. It's the best deal ever. Um, so after going through that process, you wake up one morning and realize everybody wants to know what the secret sauce is. Right. And Oops. I work for Ritz Carlton, and they're like, what sort of holy water do they pour, pour on you? And we started 15 years ago with that idea in mind. And still today, people are struggling with the idea of a service economy. Right. They're struggling with, why can't we get this right? And the piece that everyone has to understand is that the service economy is an attitude. It doesn't mean that you're a servant. And there seems to be this prevailing attitude that, well, if you're in service taking care of other people, that it's not, it, it doesn't have any honor to it. You go to other parts of the world and it's amazing. So here I just see people struggling okay. because they're really struggling with the idea, you know, manufacturing ruled business for 250 years. Everything was about what product can I make and how many can I make and what can I sell it for? Uh, now you've got this economy that's 100% driven by the customer. What does the customer want? What do they value? So people are struggling going from, I can make whatever I want, to, well, what does the customer want? And the customer is more difficult than we want to realize. Okay, but does that apply even to, uh, so a lot of the audience is sort of the smaller Startup. stage startups, yeah, the under 500,000. Like yep. at that point, it should be just product until you get some traction, or are you saying, like, just start with the customer first? Or tell me where that balance works. So I think that's a really good play. So when you do a startup, traditionally it's like product, product, service, whatever I've got, I've got to get it out of the door. You're seeing that trend now shift to go, if you've got an idea, go test it with the customer as quickly as mm, possible. Kind of lean the worst thing that happens with so many startups is you get so caught up in your product and service, you forget about, does the customer really want this shit? Um, and they all of a sudden, you've spent true, six yeah. to nine months, uh, all your energy, all your money, and you wake up and go, what do you mean nobody wants this? I have a startup that failed because <laughs> of that. How it's many so people painful. have got that story? I mean, yeah, come I on. I don't we built you know? it. Yeah, we built it this whole thing. I thought the world needed it, but we should have tested it more. All right, so um, let's talk about how... Um, this show Resort Rescue is going to look when it comes out. Like, when is it coming out? What are you going to be doing? What is, what is Resort Rescue? Okay, so uh, the, the whole, you know, rescued, it's like, you right. know, you're saving somebody. So, yeah, like a fireman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We wish. <laughs> um, so the whole idea came about was uh, our company works around the world with hotels, different businesses, and we take them through the transformation. And cultural transformation or service transformation is just like I talked about. They're struggling to get their head around how to create a better customer experience. So we got approached by Travel Channel, and they sort of said, hey, we love what you guys are doing or out there in the world. Would you like to go and do it for small companies? And in this case, small hotels. 
So we've actually been on the road for the last 12 weeks. And we've been going to middle America, independent owners who are just oh, cool. caught up okay. in their product. Um, a lot of them bought it years ago. Um, they put everything into it. It's their retirement plan. And they quite literally don't know what they're doing. And it, it, it's painful because sometimes we spend money on shit that we shouldn't have or we know we, we shouldn't get into, but you get so captured in it or you put everything into it. And there's a couple of lessons that have sort of come out, which I think is powerful for the startup community or the community in small business, is that the first one is don't get into something that you're not really passionate about. Um, mm. You must be yeah, an yeah, expert yeah. at something to really make it successful. And, and when you get into something, and I've, I've started a tech and company. And to deliver a custom, to good customer service, do you have to be an expert? You don't have to be an expert in customer service. What do you have service. to be? Just, but you don't want to be a pushover. What's the, where's the... You, well, see, one of the most important things in customer service is comfort and confidence. You must be comfortable and confident in your product. Okay. How many times does everyone here, you go to a restaurant or you go to a store, and you pick a person who's just completely not confident in what they're trying to sell? And you go, shit, I ended up with that person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so one of the right, most... Like I wanted the product yeah, until well, you're lame. Most of the fundamental yeah, yeah, aspect yeah. is... Know your product, and this is why I go back to the lesson that we see a lot with these small independent owners and as a startup. If you're not an expert at something and you haven't completely put everything into understanding how to run it, you're never going to be successful. You're going to be right. mediocre and you're going to be average. Um, and that's an important message in service that once you start the company and you, know, you do a startup and it's one or two people and you start bringing more and more people on, you've got to make sure that everyone you bring on is an absolute expert in your product and as passionate as you are. How many times have we seen it where all of a sudden we got, I met Joe earlier, Joe, nothing against you, mate, but great to meet oh, you. Yeah. But he just came out with Joe. He, he told me, he goes, I got named after a kangaroo. And I'm like, fucking Joey? And he goes, yeah, I'm Joe. Um, but uh, so imagine, imagine Aww, you've just. Sorry, <laughs> Joe. Sorry he shared that about you. <laughs> you, you dude, Joe's Can't awesome. Back Every, now. Everybody, round of applause no, just, for yeah. Joe. Come on. Yeah. He was the uh, unicorn. He was the unicorn from Christina's episode. He promised he was going to convert into some sort of outfit later on. Yeah. So, so, but imagine you bring someone on to represent, to sell your product, to represent your product. But if they are not an expert or have that passion like you did, all of a sudden someone's out there representing you, and it's yeah. doomed to fail. So, you know, service and a big part of it is you must be an expert at your product and have that comfort and confidence. What if, like, that I'm trying to tell someone about my product and I love it, and then they call me the F word? That means you really hit a high note. I think getting called oh, the right. F word is okay. <laughs> now, and that's not just because I use fucking every possible manner, noun, adjective. That's just being New Zealand. So, um, but if you get a reaction from somebody, that's better than no reaction oh, okay, at all. Okay, okay, I like that frame. So you know yeah. what? Because let's face it, we all need feedback, and I, I, that's why I say when you've got your product early on. Take it to the customer. If the customer tells you it's shit, then take it that it could be shit, but twist, you know, move a little. So getting that sort of reaction is great. If we don't get reaction and we get caught up in our own BS and think, hey, we're great and this product's going to rule the world and change the world, and as I said, 12 months later when we've put everything in it and we take it to market and everybody looks at us like we're friggin' stupid. So yeah. getting then, told that you're an effing idiot, not bad. Okay. Because so at least moving, it allows moving you Moving up pivot. in the world. Yeah. Huh? Moving up step by step. <laughs> well, at least, as I said, some feedback's better than none. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. So tell me about uh, if you were to talk to these startups, and especially if you want to talk with like about a zero dollar budget or an extremely low budget, what are the top things someone can do? Could be product, could be tip. Like what are the best ways to really think about a service economy when you don't have a lot of money and don't have a lot of time? You're, as I said, um, first of all, be an ex expert. You have to be your biggest advocate. Okay. Um, and I think most people in the startup world absolutely understand that. The second thing is tell everybody you know about it. Uh, remember, as a startup, you are your biggest salesperson. Uh, and the best thing about friends and family is that you get to practice your sales pitch over and <laughs> over again, and they get to fine tune it. Gotcha. So I often right. find people's biggest mistake is that they get caught up in this secret domain of like, wow, I've got this great product, don't tell anybody because heck, someone might copy it. Well, guess what? They already okay. copied it because someone thought of it. The most important thing is to do it really well. So get your pitch out there right from the beginning. Tell people about it. And the cool thing that I love about us human beings is that if you're connected with somebody and you tell them about your idea, they'll probably help you. Right. Um, and if they know you're really into it, I, I think one of the biggest the failures we sort yeah. of get into is we don't back ourselves 
and the product. And again, it comes back to that comfort and confidence. Gotcha. Okay, so you're from New Zealand. Um, I saw Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right, who saw Lord I of the Rings? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, good. I mean, I, I, don't, I know elves and hobbits and stuff aren't real, but are they? Dude, of course they are. <laughs> okay. All right, so here, here's the whole thing. So in New Zealand, we don't have a lot going on for us. We've got a bit of rugby going on. Um, and so Lord of the Rings put us on the map. It was awesome. And now we've got The Hobbit going out. And the funny thing is everybody goes like it's the best marketing thing ever to happen to New Zealand. Um, the problem with the whole idea of The Hobbit is exactly the name. Hobbit. It's a singular word. So when, you know, New Zealanders, we like to export everything. The biggest fucking problem we have is that there's only one of the little fuckers. So when we try to... <laughs> It's true. It's like, we've got one hobbit. How can we spread that around the world? Hence, back to New Zealand's greatest export, sheep. We have 65 million of them. So, you know what? Hobbit sheep, it always went in New Zealand. 65 million sheep? 65 million sheep. We How can export those buggers all day long, and it's perfect. So, listen, we love the hobbit. Hopefully, you uh, enjoy the movie. But being that it's singular, it doesn't have a lot of marketing ability for us, not a lot of salesmanship, and you know what? When you've only got one of something, you're in trouble because every great business is about replication. So that's the startup. That's why needs. That, that's why the sheep is the best thing to ever come out of so New if Zealand. If anybody's got an idea for a startup that exports sheep, <laughs> that is your country. Okay, so wait let up, me make sure. Wait up, that was. Did someone say bar? Oh, is that Evelyn? Sorry. I wish she could just have one episode she didn't interrupt. Yeah, like, that exactly. would really be, that would really be The excellent. funny thing is she's been waiting for like 15 <laughs> minutes to do that, so it's, it's pretty cool. To the bar? Okay. So we have you at uh, online, you're on Twitter. You start with the underscore, Shane Green, underscore Shane Green? Yeah, well, then my Twitter. Uh, and okay. is it, just go to shanegreen.com. Uh, we actually have a real company, a real business. We actually uh, help transform companies. And most of the time, you know, when you talk about transforming companies, the biggest thing that gets in the way is actually the person running the company. So it's about people as well. So um, as I said, we're here. We love Vegas. We're based in Vegas. We're just so excited about what's going on here in downtown. Um, and as I said, That's we're cool. really excited yeah. to get involved with it. It is going really good. I mean, this is this all is volunteer cool. stuff. It's, yeah, and it as I said, really you cool. get to drink beer and you're meant to be work. So yeah. fucking cool. Get Cheers. <laughs> Cheers again. Yeah, OK. And sgeinternational.com is the website. Yeah. Uh, ShaneGreen.com is the website. Uh, you go on there and oh. you'll see our webpage, a couple of other stuff. So please check us out. Okay. Anything funny you can say at the very end? Uh, uh, anybody else need anything funny? I'm like, fuck, we could go. Or you could bot. <laughs> Maybe we could, yeah. <laughs> we could do sheep jokes all night no, long. No, no, we don't need any more sheep jokes. <laughs> We're good without Cheers, them. But thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate thank it. You. So. Hashtag.